Corporate executives, do you worry about getting stuck when speaking in public? Do you worry that you'll forget what you need to say to your audience when speaking in public? This happens to many people and it's very common. But in this coming video, we'll teach you exactly what you need to do to prevent ever feeling th that fear, that anxiety, a feeling ge getting stuck or forgetting what you need to say. But first off, before we go into those seven characteristics, ask yourself a question. What are the pitfalls of not knowing who your audience is? What could be the result? I'll tell you one is if you're going to a sales presentation and you don't know who your audience is, you're probably not going to make the sale unless you're just extremely lucky. And also ask yourself, what are the reasons it's important to know your audience? What are the benefits for you to know who your audience is? With those two questions in mind, let's move into the seven characteristics that you need to know about your audience. The first is you want to know the needs, the wants, and the goals of the audience. What is it that the audience hopes to achieve by listening to your presentation? What problem is it that they're hoping to solve that you're going to help them solve? How is their life going to be better after listening to your public speaking event or to your presentation or sales pre presentation or whatever it is that you're delivering in it? That is critical to know. So you want to know their needs, their wants, and their goals. I call this psychographics. You have demographics like age and height and gender and all that stuff. Here's psychographics. Once needs backwards and goals. The next thing you want to know is you want to know the knowledge, you want to know the expertise and the experience of the audience you're addressing you're speaking to. If their knowledge is very very high you don't want to be speaking to them at a novice level like if you're speaking to a bunch of five-year-olds. However that's not so common. What is more common is people will speak at a very high level using very strong verbiage and acronyms and everything that the audience doesn't understand because the speaker wants to show how smart he is. And it's all like ego driven. And that's the worst thing you can do because here the audience is lost and they won't engage with you. They won't be listening to you and they'll be baffled. So, I mean, there is an old adage that we used to say is if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bullshit. But that really doesn't work. What you want to do is you want to speak at their level, the level of expertise, knowledge, and experience that the audience has. You want to match that level. Now, there is training that we offer and we teach how to deal with an audience that has all different levels of experience and, exp and expertise and knowledge about the topic. And there are ways to deal with that. But in general, you want to try to match your presentation to the knowledge, to the expertise and the experience of the person you're de uh, delivering the message to. That's why, for example, professors at Harvard University are exceptionally good, the good professors, at delivering very complex material, teaching very complex topics, but they really make it simple. And that's one of the big differences between Ivy League schools and maybe your normal schools. I had a professor who taught us quantum physics when I was in school, and he made it extraordinarily simple to understand. The next thing is biases. You need to address biases. Biases are preconceived ideas that people come into your presentation believing before they've even heard you open your mouth. So you want to address these biases and keep them in mind because they are critical and they will inf yeah, they will impact and influence the way people will perceive your message. It's like people wearing tinted glasses that are green. Well, they're going to see everything green or tinted glasses that are red. They're going to see everything in red. So they're coming into your presentation with those tinted glasses on. So for example, if you're dealing with an audience who is maybe right wing um, politically, you don't want to be giving them left wing ideology or, you, or at least you want to be very careful about how you go about discussing those topics or if you come into an audience that is very big on uh, climate warming and you want to be care and you have other people there that are don't believe in climate warming well you want to be very careful how you address that topic because you will end up offending people and if you offend them they won't like you they won't listen to you <laughs> and you're done and you've just wasted your time and energy so you want you want to be very sensitive to the people's sensitivities and biases about things whether those biases you agree with or not are irrelevant. What is relevant is that you're aware of them and you address them diplomatically. And that is basically summarizes who is my audience. Now why not book a consultation with us and learn how we can help you or your organization deliver more impactful presentations that get results that impact your bottom line and improve your sales. Or presentations as leaders that we want to motivate our employees and get people on the right track and keep them motivated in the right track and also employee retention which is critical nowadays as people seem to change companies as fast as you might change socks. And lastly you can download our PDF which talks about 
fear and anxiety and the three main reasons why people suffer fear and anxiety when speaking in public and what they can do about it and how you can fix it.